Hello YouTube, this is Daryl Dawes, your blind musician friend, coming from to you live from Victorville, California. And today, I want to talk about uh, some more sound design things. We're going to talk about common edit today. Okay, so, um, the common edit area is where... Here, let me move my chair a little bit. Is where you're gonna set up all of your. Uh, you're gonna make all uh, all of your settings for all eight elements. Um, so even if you don't use eight elements in your sound, this is where you set up your um, your basic uh, settings for sound design. I'll give you an example. Um, Let's see. You know, before I uh, go into this, let me pick a. Okay, here's a guitar. All right, this will work. Instead of uh, initializing the sound this time, we're gonna just go ahead and go edit and come and edit. All right, so F1 is your main area. Uh, the, the first thing we could pick is F1 and then SF1 okay um, is this is this is the area where you're gonna like um, name your sound pick your category uh, and your subcategory let me tell you that in order to name your sound you're gonna want to press F6 I mean I'm sorry SF6 SF6, you're going to hold that down when you're in the name field, okay? Uh, for those of you, uh, those of my viewers that are blind, um, we're going to need sighted assistance, guys, for this area. I don't name my sounds um, because of that, because I don't have the sighted assistance that I need um, at this time. So, um, we've got... Uh, the name area here, this, this is all for SF1. Let's go to SF2, okay? Uh, and I, I believe, um, let me talk a little bit more about the name area. If you're holding down the FS, I mean, I'm sorry, SF6 button, you're gonna use your cursor right and left to move through the characters you're gonna use the data wheel to pick your characters for that name, okay? Um, to pick each letter or number or symbol or whatever, okay? And then um, the category, the reason why they have the category and subcategory sub in this area is so that you can pick, uh, you pick a category that your sound is gonna be in and then you give it further uh, details through subcategory. And um, this is where you're gonna need sighted assistance as well, okay? Uh, unfortunately. Now, uh, what this does is it makes it easier to find your voices or your sounds in the search uh, category search. Uh, all right, uh, let's go to F2. F2 is play mode. This is where you set up where you're going to. Um, are you going to use a mono? Or are you going to use poly? Okay. So this is where you set that up. Uh, it's the f and and. Notice that I didn't even use the cursor. So by default, when you first get there, uh, you don't need the cursor to the top. It's already it's already on that on that uh, first box that you can pick. Okay, <clears throat> let's go down. Take the cursor down. Okay, here. Um, this is where you can set up your. The, your playing style. I mean, um, so there's there's two, there's multi and there's single. Uh, the 
I'm, if I'm, if I remember correctly. Um, these are just for, um, you know, helping you with your sound design. I, I, I'm not exactly sure what this does. I haven't discovered it yet, but when I do, I will get in more depth on it, okay? The next spot is um, a spot where you can change the way your keyboard responds to, uh, it's basically like pitch, but this is gonna, keep in mind, this is gonna affect the entire uh, sound. So if you use two elements, three elements, eight elements, it's gonna affect the entire, the overall, okay, sound. Okay, um, going back up to the top and go to the right once. Now you're on something I enjoy playing with for hours is micro tuning. By default, It's on equal temperament. I'm going to turn this up just a little bit so you guys can hear. Okay, so this is equal temperament. The first, um, I mean, there's a lot here, and, and I'm not going to go through them all, but I'm going to show you just a couple. This is, uh, this next setting is pure major. So that same C scale. now set to pure major and um, here's one of the techniques I like to use uh, uh, he, uh, when I when I'm doing ear training for uh, my, my students one thing um, I do is is always hold down the C key your left hand and I'm not even doing the fingering for the scale I'm just playing each note and listening to how it responds to the uh, how it how it uh, what's the word I'm looking for how it connects up with the the other note I'm playing so I'm playing a C here I'm playing a C here so when I go up And, and, and this I use for, I'm going to use for microtuning. So you can hear. Okay, that's pure major. Let's go to pure uh, minor, which is the very next one. So you hear, hear that third, but that's not a minor, right? First, let's, li let's listen to it in equal temperament. I'll play this one. That's our minor scale that we're going to use. And we're going to go up to pure minor. You hear how that's different? Right? Okay. So that's pure minor. Let's look at uh, something more interesting. Um, here's something pretty drastic. Watch this. Let me get to it first, and then I'll show it to you. Here we go. Okay, here's C. Now here's another C. Now look at that tuning. These are all C's I'm playing. So there's a lot of different settings uh, and tunings. There's a lot of tunings for this, okay? That was a chromatic scale, by the way. <laughs> Sounds crazy, right? All right, going back to equal temperament and leave it there. All right, um, right underneath that box is the uh, micro tuning root note. This is where you choose what key you're gonna use the micro tuning for. And you have, for
from C to B. Okay? Which, if you think about it, that covers everything. Because look, C. You have all of those to set it up for. Okay? All right, so that's that screen. Let's go ahead and go on to SF3. Now, notice this is all under F1, okay? Top left. This is um, probably not going to sound very good for this particular voice I picked, the guitar with portamento, wow. Th that, and that's the screen we're on. We're on the portamento screen. This is where you can set your portamento. Um, the only choices here on this particular box is off and on. Sounds weird. All right. Um, underneath that is, is your time. Your portamento time is here. You can make adjustments. And you have from, I believe, if I remember correctly, you have from 0 to 127 for settings. That's a lot. Okay? I'm going to put it on 0 for a second. And let's make some minuta. Let's not have the portamento so big. This is not the right voice for the portamento, but I want to go through this to show you to show you some of uh, these screens, okay? Uh, I, I picked the guitar for an uh, obvious reason that you'll see very shortly. Okay, so, um, so there you have time. Also in the screen, uh, you will find, um, this is just, let me see if to make sure this is... Time just went away, but I just said bye bye. Okay, so underneath time is your setting. I believe this is where you find the setting for how your fundamental response to your playing. If this um, sound were a, a mono sound and um, then you can now this work works best with mono is what I'm trying to say so and you have uh, two choices here you have fingered and um, single I think that was no no that was the other one this fingered time and full time or a bagato I'm sorry <clears throat> so finger um, is uh, is I think what it's on now. It's on finger. Legato works um, like I said for it, it, it's for a mono and it's basically uh, so that if you're doing leads and you hit a note uh, while you're holding down the key and you hit another note, it it it, it sounds that note. And this I found is best when you are using the extended articulation um, legato setting in the uh, voice edit. Uh, when you're setting up your element and your waveform, you can pick your type of expanded articulation that you want to use. Okay, so that's what that's for. Let's go ahead and move on. There's two more. I think there's two more things you can pick here. You have um, your portamento. Um, okay, wait a minute. You know what? Um, let me go back just a little bit here. This is the th thing about not being able to see the screen and trying to rem remember everything that I, I've read. It's a challenge sometimes because it's it's there's a lot to this keyboard and then you got to try to retain it all right so um underneath the box that i showed you where uh, you have time that is actually it's five o'clock p.m um 
that is actually a setting for your uh, your reverb, and you have up to I think seven settings here. Okay, um, it has to do with how the reverb responds, how it moves in time. Okay, and then the box on the right of time, on the, on, on the right top, right top. This is, I believe, where you find your... Your multi, I mean, I'm gonna say your fingered and your... Um, and your, your fingered time and your legato. And then you have uh, portamental slope is, is, is the last thing you could pick in this uh, screen. How the how it slopes, I guess, the curve, the way it's legato. I, I don't really use the portamento a whole lot, but it's here to play with, and that's what I wanted to show you. Okay, let's go on to the next screen. I'm gonna turn off the portamento. Um, the next screen, if the camera is shaking, I'm sorry, my keyboard is literally right against the right against the tripod, so. Um, and there's no other way to, to do this with the, I'm, I'm, I'm shooting from an iPhone, so there you go. All right, uh, SF4. Whew, this one's a interesting one. This is where, okay, so the first thing you can pick in this screen is, um, is your function you see how you have the function keys over here by the uh, you, you there's these two function buttons you can press them for this particular sound it's a muted guitar it's like these he's on uh, between frets and and then you have the harmonics in the next button okay right now my settings are set to momentary, momentarily. Um, you can set it for latch, okay? And what that does is, let me see, I'll set it for latch. Okay, so when it's on latch, when you press the button down, uh, for the function, you can let go, and it stays there. This is for function A. So this whole area is for function A. Um, and turn it, and you, you can uh, turn it back to momentarily. So now, on this, when you press the function button A, you have to hold it down while you play, and you let it go. It, it it goes back to the original sound, okay? Um, hmm. What else is in this screen? Okay. Um, and then you have, I think I'm going to go down and make sure, just to be sure so I don't tell you guys wrong. Of course, the one you go down is function B. And it has the same settings. So the, uh, uh, the settings are latched or in, in, in the proper order. It should be momentarily and latched. Okay. Latched again means you press the function key, let it go. And you have nothing but harmonics. Momentarily, I mean, in, in order to get back to your uh, original sound, by the way, you have to press the function B button again. Momentarily means you hold it down and can let it go and it goes back to the original. Okay? And when it, uh, you know, on, on another video, I'll show you how to set up these articulations um, because when you're doing sound design, it might be fun to 
have that knowledge on how to set those up. Okay, I'm using a factory designed sound, so these are all these parameters are already set, so it makes it easier to hear them right away. Okay, moving on. Um, after that, we have our settings for our pitch bend. Um, right now, upper is set to two, I believe. Let's double check. Right? That's two. And you press, uh, it, it goes up to, well, on this, you have two sides. Again, like, we, like you did with pitch in the sound design area and then in the uh, normal edit area as they call it so um you can set this believe it or not i've never seen this before until i look i never i'd never experienced it before until i saw this keyboard or you started using it and 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 this is weird okay you can actually set your pitch to go down when you press up on the moon wheel, on the uh, pitch bend wheel. And likewise, you can set it to go up when you pull back. Because what they did is they made it so that you can go negative, I think it was negative, what, 48? For your um, <clears throat> upper and lower setting on the negative side. On the positive side, on the posi positive side, it is plus twenty-four. Okay, and so this is this uh, box we're on right now is the box for uh, the the pitch upper upper end of the pitch. Okay, it's already set to two, so uh, to get it to to uh, go an octave, um, you're gonna from zero to twelve, right? That's what you would do for an octave. We're already on, we're already on two, so we just go three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. How did I do that? I was using the decrement. I'm sorry, the increment button. You could do it with the data wheel, uh, the data wheel or the data dial, as well. But um, there's your pitch. Okay, that's upper, and then come down one of the box. Uh, below the box below is lower let's set that that's already at two let's set it to uh, an octave so you use decrement three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve and there you go and this after you make these changes you just follow the same procedure that you did for storing anything else um, so of course you would hit store, edit, pick your locations, and hit edit again to verify your sound is you're you're there. Hit store. I'm sorry, not store. Hit enter twice, and then check to uh, see if the sound is saving. If you could see, if you are sighted, you will see the screen. Uh, put a message up. Never turn your keyboard off while it's storing, guys. Do not turn your keyboard off while it's storing when it's silent like that. Do not turn your keyboard off. You will corrupt everything in your board. All your sounds will be corrupted, okay? Don't do it. Um, and that's for any other process. Even if it's not storing sounds, if, if it's storing your songs and sequences, whatever you're storing, do not turn off the keyboard while it's processing, okay? All right. And let's move on. So I think um, in this screen, there may be, I think, one or two more things. I don't use these very often, um, quite yet. <clears throat> but I think, um, I, I, if I remember correctly, the next thing in this screen had to do with um, how the function keys uh, these two function buttons on the right here, the A and the B, um, are adjusted. It's an offset value that you can change. Okay? And I think this box is on the right. It's top right. And you can change... Uh, let, 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 
you know what I'm gonna do? I'm, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna set. Uh, let's see, which one do I want to mess with? Uh, let's let's mess with function B. Okay. And change it to um to latched. Okay. So that way we get the uh the idea of what's happening here. Go over to that box now, and I'm gonna make some changes. Aha. Okay. Sorry for the camera shaking. Um. This area, it, it, it you have to use your ears to hear it, but. So it's changing the way the, uh, the way the function is articulated. It, it kind of, to me, it sounds like it's changing the, uh, the EQ, the EQ of that sound. Or perhaps even the, um, the filterization, the way it's filtered, uh, the frequency, perhaps. No, it's not really the frequency. It's hard to explain, but this is, that's what that box does, <clears throat> okay? All right, moving right along, next screen, because there's a lot of uh, screens here. All right, so we covered um, that is it for, for this, because SF5 and SF6, they're nothing for this screen, okay? Um, the next screen that we're gonna go to uh, is output. Okay, so output is F2 and then SF1. Here we find volume. This is the volume, the overall volume for the entire sound, okay? All eight elements are affected. There's your full volume and you can turn it all the way down. In this screen, you can also uh, set up your pan, okay? So that's probably the next box below. Yes, it is. And it has the center and the two sides, of course, left and right. Uh, I believe it's 63 on each side, if I'm not mistaken, the numbers. Okay. Now, below that is nothing it's still pan so those just, just there's just those two boxes on that side of the screen go to the right top right the first one has to do with your effects okay whether it's a chorus or yeah echo in this case it's echo and you can add more or less okay so in this case there's no two sides it's if you turn your dial your data dial all the way to the if you go counterclockwise with your data dial all the way over here to the left um then you will be at zero no worries there okay coming down next box this i believe is reverb this is where you can set all your reverb settings. And then you come down to zero and have a zero reverb. So there you go. That's that screen. Let's put just a little reverb back, can we? Just a little bit, just a little bit, can we? All right. Now, let's see about the next screen. Okay, that's it for this um, this this screen. So there's no SF two, SF three in this screen. Okay, S. Uh, so let's go to F three, and same here. This is the only screen. Um, there's nothing else to pick here. Okay. Um, this is the EQ. You have a three band EQ. You have high, mids, and lows. Um, what I suggest in this area, um, because I don't, I don't usually play around with this area, but go ahead and have fun with it. Um, 
you are going to be changing the EQ to the entire uh, sound. So it's affecting all eight elements again. So you have your, your bass and your mids and all that. All that. I think there's uh, something called Q here. Um, so this is, this is where you wanna just play around and, and listen to what's happening. It might be a good idea to um, put earphones on so that way you can hear when you're making changes if it's going to affect your neighbors or whatnot. I don't know how loud you have your uh, keyboard up and what kind of speakers you might be using. I'm using computer speakers right now <clears throat> and it works just fine for what I'm trying to do. All right, um, that's, so that's that screen. Let's move on. So, S, let's see, so we want, not S, but let's go to F4. Well, this should be fun. And in here, um, I am just gonna introduce you to this because it's, um, I think you'll have fun with this. Here, this is where you set up your controllers. Um, the first thing, the first box is the element switch. The, the controllers are already set for this sound. And unfortunately, I do not exactly know which uh, set because there's, uh, so what happens here, the SF1 through, I think, is it SF6? I think those are all different controller sets. So um, you can choose what set you're on. I'm gonna go with set one. And let's just find out if um, the mode wheel is affected here. Okay, so down um, the top box is your element switch. You have to turn it on in order for this to work. It's already on, so I'm not gonna bother. Um, the next box below that is where you set your uh, source, whether it be pitch bend, ribbon, we don't have a ribbon on here, but they still have that as, that as a choice. Um, assuming for MIDI purposes, uh, breath controller I think was uh, another choice here. Foot switch uh, and uh, so on and so on. Okay, so this, that's what that box is for. The next box is destination, destination. So this is where I'm gonna find out what set we're on here. I just set the uh, mode wheel to full throttle and I'm gonna change the destination. Okay, so there is a, I do hear a little bit of things happening there. So this destination area, you know what, for this case, uh, for this uh, particular spot, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and, and pick, I'm gonna act like I'm gonna do a sound design from scratch, okay guys? So we're gonna initialize, oops. Make sure I don't wanna initialize the wrong thing here. Initialized, okay, pick a, easy wave to work with. I mean, uh, something, oops. My favorite sawtooth sound wave. Okay, um, let's go to common edit and let's go ahead and go to remember our output with the volume and all that. I'm gonna go over here and make my volume setting now. Okay, now let's go to controller set, F, that's F4, and set one, element switch, turn it on. And I'm gonna turn, uh, I'm gonna pick uh, for this video, let's go with the mode wheel, like the mod wheel again. Okay, I'm gonna make sure the depth, uh, the, um, depth is turned up. Let me make sure here that we're um, 
doing the right area. Yes, we are. All right. So, back to the element switch. We have an element switch in the top, the first uh, box. Second box below that is the area or so what they call source. What is the source that is going to be used for a controller? And I told you the list. Uh, even the, I believe the uh, function keys are here too. A and B, okay, in this list. Um, maybe what I'll do is uh, somehow try to throw up a, a list on this, on the video. If not, I'll, 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 I'll figure out a way to give you guys a full list. Unless you have your book, which can be very frustrating to read, let me tell you guys. As blind users, it's just... Wow, <laughs> trying to read that thing in Braille, it gives you a headache sometimes. Um, so let's go down here to uh, uh, destination. The way I usually check to see if uh, my controller is, you know, which destination I want. Destination is going to mean where, what, what, do you, what do you want the, uh, the motor wheel to do? I'm going to put it full throttle. And what I usually do to make sure I'm in this area is I'll hold down the key, turn this dial. Okay, I don't hear anything. Hold on one second. I might have done something wrong. Okay, hear that? That means you're in the general area where you can start making your choice of what... Uh, what you want the mode wheel to do. So then I'll go to the end and start going backwards. So obviously this looks like his filters. And there's a depth, um, how deep, you know, how. So you can set that, that's the box right underneath that destination. Okay, I'm going back up to destination. Because there's other ways you can use this one. Week. So you can assign it to different things. And this is why I usually have the depth so high. So I can make sure that I'm hearing all it has to offer me. Offer me you see what I'm saying? So some of these don't work. But trust me, they're there. This sounds, here's one for volume. Okay. They do uh, have one for vibrato. You just gotta find it. Okay, so here's a, here's one for pitch. Okay. There's another pitch. That one's weird. Um, And then there's, uh, let's see, what is this? That's an LFO. That's another LFO, but see how they're affecting. It's a uh, little different. There's our vibrato. Now you can change the depth, which is the box underneath destination, to set it for the vibrato setting you want for your mode wheel. So this is at full throttle with the mode wheel. Okay, so that means uh, you have to press it you have to make the mode wheel go all the way forward for, for, in order for it to make that uh, deep vibrato that way. Okay, um, what else is in this screen? <clears throat> I don't think there was anything else in this screen actually. Uh, so remember to change your sets, you probably press F2, F3, F4, F5, so on and so on. Okay, that's it for that screen. The next screen, F5, LFO. This screen, I'm gonna go in depth with on another video because it could take some time. Um, <clears throat> there's some really cool stuff in here for LFO. This is what I'm gonna call LFO1 um, because there's actually two, L two LFOs. LFO1, uh, has some more features to it than LFO in the 
normal edit area. Okay, so we'll, t we'll talk about that in another video, okay? But that's your LFO, that's what, F that's what F5 is for, LFO. F6 is for um, effects. And, 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 and again, uh, that's, well, let's see, we'll, we'll talk about it. But just, just to let you know, on the LFO screen, um, the reason why I want to talk about it in another video is because it has a lot to it. I mean, just like the effects really do, but I think you're going to enjoy the effects, so I'll, I'll touch upon it. Uh, but this has a lot. I mean, there's so many waves. You can actually, this, you can actually build your own LFO. It has a template for you to do that, um, and you can build your own user LFO. Um, you can also synchronize your LFO uh, to your sequencer. That's unusual. I've never experienced that until I use this keyboard. So you can syn synchronize your LFO with your tracks that you're creating or your arpeggio. Mm -hmm. But we'll get into that on another video, how to do, how to do all that. Okay, yes, uh, let's go on, go on to F6. F6, S, uh, SF1, is connect. This is where you're going to connect uh, to your effects, uh, your, your instrument effects, inserts, and, and whatnot. Um, I'm not a pro at this screen, but I want to show you the effects here um, <clears throat> and get you, get you started. So after you pick, um, you have bypass, you have a, a, a instrument A, B, um, and there may be some other things in the screen. I'm gonna actually try to get someone sighted to look at this for me. Um, but I'll show you what I know, okay? All right, <clears throat> I haven't played with the vocoder yet. This keyboard does have a vocoder um, option where you can, uh, plug a microphone into the back of the keyboard and speak or sing through the microphone and play the keyboard at the same time and you have a vocoder. But when I when I um, experience that, I will definitely teach it to you guys, okay? It may be a while, but there's, as you can see, there's a lot to learn here. So let's set up our instruments. Instrument mm -hmm. effect, A, Okay, so then I'm going to press, so F, F, SF2 is for your vocoder. Uh, we're going to skip that. SF3 is your instrument uh, insert. Okay. Uh, instrument insert A. And this is where you can pick up your, uh, you pick all your effects, the top box. You can pick all your effects. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you have all kinds of effects. You can scroll through them. There's a lot. <clears throat> There's a lot to pick. And underneath the uh, the next box below, let me see, let me make sure here. It's like a subcategory for your effects. So you can pick up, uh, so right, right, right now we're on reverb, and now you can pick the different types of reverbs. And you're probably wondering, question. Can I program my effects? Enter. Yes. So when you pick an effect, like reverb, uh, you pick your subcategory for the reverb. Pick the subcategory. Now, I'm going to scroll to the right once. Subcategory was the box underneath the, uh, the main category. I'm going to scroll to the right, and this is where you can start messing around with your reverb and the way it's programmed. Um... And it can get really crazy, as you can see. So, and what I'm doing is, when I'm when I'm making all these different settings, I'm just merely moving the cursor up and down for the different boxes to see what choices I have. 
because I can't see the screen, I'm just going to use my ears. What do I want it to sound like? So I found out where it's wet. I found the dry, right? So you just play around with these boxes. Use your up and down cursor uh, to highlight the box you want to change. Um, when I make uh, changes, again, I'm using my thumb uh, of my right hand on the shift button while I turn the data wheel or the data dial. And this moves me quickly through the numbers so I can hear the changes immediately. Okay? Um, you don't have to do that. That's just what I do. When I get close to the number I want, then I take my thumb off of that shift button so it doesn't jump so fast. Okay? Because you're jumping by tens um, when you hold that shift. Okay? So that's effects, guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, like I said, any... Thing else I learned about these uh, parameters in the common edit section I will make sure I get back to you and teach it to you okay so enjoy using this wonderful MOX F8 and if you like my videos please subscribe and hit that notification bell uh, that notification bell is a weird bell <laughs> so make sure you just look uh, for where it says personalized settings and change those personalized, personalized settings of yours to all. So that way you will be notified when I upload a new video. And um, also hit that like button so YouTube knows that you're liking the content that I'm uploading. Okay, have a good one, be safe, and God bless.